Let's do the disappointment. We're going to call this the disappointment all-stars. We'll just make a team. Team of 12. We're going 12 deep. No extra roster yeah, spots. Yeah, we'll go fast. Good. There's a couple that we're... I mean, we're not going to spend an hour talking about Monty Williams. Who is a, your number one pick for the disappointment all-stars? Monty Williams. 23-24 edition. Monty Actually, Williams, I captain. Okay. I don't want to make him the captain. Uh, look, there's two different numbers that float out there that he's 196. Well, I, let me put it this way. There's two different numbers. I think it's without Chris Paul in games and without Chris Paul on the roster. And basically, both of them tell you he's, under, he's 100 games under for both. Uh, we've already covered this. We even covered it last week. But there's a lesson in this. It's just because you've been bad for a long time doesn't mean you're due to be good. Okay, this isn't a roulette wheel. <laughs> this, right. is, this is still, you are only going to be as good or as bad as your roster. And I felt like there were a couple teams this year. I think Charlotte thought they were going to be good. I think Portland thought, hey, we have Aiton and we got Brogdon coming off the bench and we've got Sharp, we've got Simons, get this yeah. guy. Like, you know, hey, you know, as a plucky, maybe we're fighting for a nine or a 10 or whatever. It's like, nope. So you can start carrying yourself like you're owed improvement just because you haven't been good for a long time. And I think Detroit should have just looked at the four guys that matter, that they've had these. And I still like, I think, all four of those guys. I know I'll probably be super disappointed by two of them. But just like, what was the point of trying to balance this out until you figure out what you have with those guys that you've spent these high picks on? So that's my, I don't need to do any more. And I've already spent too much time on it. My number one pick. I guess this is the second pick of the Disappointment All-Stars, Jordan Poole. And I'm going to zag a little bit. It's not just that he's been really bad to watch and that's one of the worst trades in a while now um, because that's one of the worst contracts in the league. I just thought it would be more fun to have him on a bad team. From a league pass standpoint, not only is it not fun, it's the opposite of fun where I feel bad for him half the time. I don't want to feel bad for guys on League Pass. That's not what League Pass is for. I either want to watch really good teams battling or I want to watch players on bad teams and meaningless games put up stats. I don't want to feel sad for somebody. And over and over again, when you watch these Wizards games, you feel sad for them. I feel bad for Jordan Poole. I feel like, it, like that, Jordan, that Draymond punch kind of like changed the course of his career. And he's so bad in some of these crunch times, like in the Laker game the other night where he actually kept them in and got hot. And then he's like, I'm feeling it. And then he took like four or five of the worst shots I've ever seen in my life. And then like sad Jordan Poole came back. It just bums me out. It's way worse than just that he's been not good on the Wizards. Jordan Poole, also on my board. <laughs> I think you're... <laughs> Shooting splits, 40 and 31% from three. I mean, he yeah. shot like almost 37% from three a couple years ago. Uh, and you're right. At one point with the words, you're like, hey, they did it again. They did it again with one of these late picks, high profile recruit, whole deal. Like He's, he's going to be at least Lou right. Williams or Jamal yeah. Crawford. Like he's going to be one of those guys. Worst case scenario. So he's taken 14.6 field goal attempts per game. Um, that's 52nd most shots per game in the NBA. Ugh. If you go through the top 100 field goal attempt guys, all right, the guy who takes the most shots to the 100 yeah. most, he's 99th in field goal percentage. Ugh. Scoot's number I mean, one. every advanced it, metric. 99th and lowest. Scoot, yeah. Scoot has not had a month over 40% from the floor. Yeah. So he's also probably on the board for the disappointment drive. I'm not going to pick him because I have to wait until next year to actually be disappointed by the whole thing. Uh, I would I would feel a little worse for Poole if I didn't see it in person with that Wizards game. It's funny because after we talked about the Wizards and I said multiple times how bad they were, I, I, I love chesty fans from this kind of team where like, I don't know what I'm talking about because they're tanking. It's like, yeah, but you know what most teams do, even if they're tanking? When they inbound the ball and they're on defense, they don't just let a guy go down to the other rim. <laughs> right. In high school, you do that. You get also, what at. are you tanking for? This is right. the worst draft in 10 years. Well, you who know, lock up the number one for? pick. It's, it's a fun thing. Okay. I don't, I don't think they have to worry about it. And then when he said his legacy was cemented, I just don't think anybody under 30 should talk about their legacy being cemented when, you know, it's look, he helped that years. team, but. Yeah, also and then every the like three months, Draymond will give another interview about the fight. I tried to get Iguodala this week to open up about it. All I right, do it. You're up next. What's your pick? Atlanta Hawks, twenty six and thirty four. Mm, they were on my board. Two games up on the eleven seed Brooklyn Nets. If Brooklyn were actually like a little more stabilized, 
You wonder if Atlanta would miss the play-in. Uh, through 60 games last year, they were 30 and 30. They finished 41 and 41. This team should at least be 500. But defensively, they are 28th in the league, only better than Charlotte and your Wizards. I was in Boston visiting my daughter right before the NBA season, and I made a slew of future props on FanDuel. And I did really well, except for everything I, t- I put the Hawks in. Because I thought, we both, you and I thought, oh, Quinn will get them to like 43 and 39. Yeah, right? that was pretty be, much it. We're yeah, like, it's they're like, good we're enough not to saying do that. they're going to win the East, but they're going to be so good offensively. And, um, and the fact that Jalen Johnson has been as good as he is, and they're still not good. Some of the stats with them, like, uh, like, I, what did I say to you that the, their record against the spread, they're like 23 games under 500 against the spread, which is like impossible. Vegas so adjusts I have the line. It, I, I have the number. They're 19 and 41 against the spread. They're covering 31.7% of like, the time. It's impossible. Charlotte is the next worst team at covering, and they're covering 41% of the time. So they're covering 10 uh, points lower than the second worst team. Well, th- and it's why they need to be a high pick on the, the disappointment All-Stars because they're not just disappointing. People kept thinking it was going to turn around and they kept betting on them and be like, like the last two Brooklyn games. Yeah, right, oh, the right. Hawks are favored against Brooklyn. This is today. It's today. It's like, no, they lost again. Uh, and they're kind of fun to watch. They're also one of those teams that if you have somebody on the other team that you either like watching or is on your fantasy team or something like, oh, they, he's got the Hawks tonight. Could be a huge game. Like, this is the team. I think Luca will be the next guy to get 81. Like, C- Kobe's 81 is going to go down over the next two to three years. Somebody's going to do 80 plus. And it's going to be like Luca against the Hawks type thing. But I think the Hawks are going to be involved in somebody's 81 point game. Well, he did get his his 70 against the Hawks. He got 73 against them. I'm saying like yeah. the 80 plus, whenever somebody does that, it's going to be against the team. I like think he Hawks. could have had more points. He, they actually needed to win that game and he was making some really good passes in that game. Yeah. Um, Luca was like still making the right plays. I, I wish I had said this prior too because I completely agree with you because Luca has the kind of game where if he just decided, I think there's a lot of players in the game that were like, hey, I want to get 60 tonight. And then if a few go my way and I get a few free throws, like maybe we get a 70, maybe we get close to 80. I think if Luca decided in an awful matchup defensively, if he said, I'm getting 20 I'm, points I'm, a quarter, I'm just going to get 80 tonight, guys. And everybody was like, awesome, let's do it. He's like, I'm getting 20 points a right. quarter and I'm going to get to 80. And then and Grant Williams could I'm going to foul at everybody else. Pass yeah. a, ever heard of passing? Grant Williams is like, bad idea, Luke. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, all right, my next pick. OKC not trading for a center. On the board. Have it on my board. It, it made me mad during the trade deadline. We talked about it a lot. It made me mad that they used the Bertans extension for something that wasn't a center. They also used it for Gordon Hayward, who the odds of him being healthy during the playoffs, I would say, is a coin flip. It's 50-50 at best. He, he just has some of the worst luck of anyone in the league. But the Gordon Hayward thing was way more about clearing the cap space. Once I looked at I, you know, sometimes I hate doing the trade deadline stuff live because of that. But when you, when you looked at some of the stuff, there's more flexibility that allows them. That's all. Okay. Well, worth, you know what else? It, you know what else would have uh, allowed them something is getting a center because they have a chance to like at least make the Western Finals. And I just think they could have topped the Gafford price. Gafford is exactly what they needed. Um, some flexibility depending on the team. You know, and they just don't have enough flexibility for three straight playoff series. And I, I just don't fundamentally understand why Presti, who I think has been, you know, in the running for best GM in the last, 15 years, why he looked at this big picture and just thought, we don't have enough to win the win the title. I'm not going to use any assets when they have so many assets. I don't get it. They could have topped that Dallas trade and it would have done nothing for them. Like from an, from an asset loss standpoint, they would have been fine. Uh, I know that we, we look at centers like for a while, it felt like, hey, you can just get one. You know, you'll get one late. They're always, nobody cares. They're super cheap or whatever. And then I think I don't know if they banked on that or what, but I just wish they had a different look. I wish they had, it's not even about every single playoff game, but depending on a, a certain matchup, 
I just wish they had a little bit more behind Chet and Jalen Williams. Yeah, if they end up playing Minnesota in a playoff series, you're basically going to have to, you know, duct tape the series together and hope Chet doesn't get in foul trouble and, you know, try to attack them different ways. I just don't, I don't know why they removed the option from themselves. All right, who do you have next? Tobias Harris without Embiid. I know he had 28 points oh. today. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about Tobias Harris a lot. I beat this joke to death where, I don't know, every month or so, I would just tweet out, like, hey, the Sixers have Tobias Harris? Um, <laughs> it always gets a chuckle out of me. I know. That's why I do it. January 19, 6, three and a half assists, 51 and 35% from the floor and three, four and a half free throw attempts per game in January. So no Embiid, right? Got hurt in that Warriors game. That was the very end of the month. Yeah. He's 15, 6, and 3.7 assists. He's shooting 25% from three, and his free throws are down by more than half. So I know that like Buddy Heald and Oubre were like, hey, that big guy's finally out of our way. Yeah. Like Heald's like, now it's Buddy time. And, you know, Maxie should be taking a ton of shots or whatever. But and it just unfortunately kind of reinforces some of the stuff. Like you look at Tobias, we all know how talented he is. But, you know, I would be looking at that if I'm another front office and who knows maybe it's going to be a team that's like we got to spend our cap space on somebody and whatever he's talented he score or Orlando but, come um, back you know he's tall so that would fit in but I know he had a nice game tonight but how do those numbers go down unless the argument is that Embiid just makes his life that much easier and all that stuff but like there's just certain nights where it's like hey man like you're going to have to take some bad shots like you're going to have to to bail them out of this but and he can't uh, quite do it yeah I'm with you it's just not I there. went on a three-hour walk with my wife today, and oh, I watched gosh. the entire Mavs Sixers game on my phone as we were walking. And at halftime of the game, Stephen A. came on and brought up Tobias Harris, and he says we he, and he said something like, "We don't talk about Tobias Harris enough." And I was like, I was walking, and I'm like, that's got to be one of the weirdest sentences anyone said this year that we don't talk about. So we should be talking about Tobias Harris more because I feel like we've actually probably talked about Tobias Harris too much is where I landed as I walked on some side street in, uh, in West Hollywood. I think that's the show. That's the show. We were talking about Blame Pie. All right. And I think the new show is you just have one person that we generally trust, higher approval rating in sports media. Yeah. And <laughs> they just come on for like, 10 minutes a week and go talking about this too much. Need to talk about this more. Need to talk about this a little less. He just, too much, he, not enough or just right. Right. And so all he's, doing, <laughs> all he's doing is keeping track of so that all of us know, because yeah. it is, look, I'm guilty of it. I've done it plenty of times. You radio should. But when you think of the statement and then how there's never a fucking follow up to it of we need to be talking about fill in the blank more. And then everyone at the desk. It's a big just, college just, football and NFL one. Right. You just, then everybody just looks at the person. It's like, okay, so what is, now so, what? Uh, so it would be like, all right, next up, Jalen Williams. And I'd be like, need to talk about it more. It's like, yeah, nope, that's a more. I meant the, I meant the other Jalen Williams. Less. Oh, maybe just yeah, enough. We're probably good. Yeah. We're, we're probably okay. J Will, not J Dub. I just um, write one and two. All right, my next one. I don't know if this guy's on your board. Mikhail Bridges. PER went from 21 to 16 on my board. Oh, he was. Okay. Um, you know, average 26 a game after the KD trade. A lot of talk about how he was this rising star, including on this podcast, and became the guy on Brooklyn this year. And... It's starting to look like he's the third option. And as you and I have discussed many times, I think if you're the first option on a basketball team in the NBA, you're probably going to score around 20, 21 points as a worst case scenario. It's called the Jeremy Grant corollary. Mikel Bridges, 21 a game, never jumps off any of the TVs for me. And I just disappointed. That's where this I've landed. Is in this is disappointment, though, directly in relation to like, oh my God, last year. Because he was awesome. Yeah. Then. It was like, went, whoa, is this guy now a top 20 guy in the league? Yeah. And, you know, I was, 
I admit all the years in Phoenix, I was like, I still think he's somebody that, that needs other things to happen around him. And then the way he was getting to kind of the middle area, you know, those, they weren't just straight like Booker mid range pull ups. Yeah. But he would work it. And he'd get these there was turnarounds. Creativity. He would, he would get, and it was like, man, he's got the ball in his hands all the time. And this stuff's all happening. I mean, his box score plus minus went from over three last year on not a great team with Brooklyn to zero this year. Uh, I don't love the full Cam Thomas experience. The usage is dipped down. So there's other guys taking shots. But for somebody that you thought, like, maybe he actually is a two on a really good team, I there's just a decline there. There's a decline there for his numbers that is alarming based on how excited we were with his Brooklyn run last year. Unless Could he caught be people cur- by some... Some people are saying curse of Tommy Alter. It's a hell of a curse. We love you, Tommy. Um, I just thought he'd be better on Brooklyn. I agree. It seemed like, especially with scoring up 25 a game minimum. And then he was kind of floating around like, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I want to be here for now. There was a couple of those. I know the, uh, the side family loves him, but, um, I'll tell you this. He would not be untradeable for me if I was the Nets. Like if OKC wanted to come in and say, hey, we're going to give you a shitload of picks here or pick a team that's got a ton of assets. Yeah, but I got to know what the about picks it. are now. Like, I think we've all fallen for this. It's like, oh, we'll give you four first. We're like, okay, what are they? Two lottery and two top well, I, 24 I, I want protected. a good young player too. I'm just, Brooklyn is in all time no man's land with this team they have. And they're either the 11th seed or the 10th seed. Congratulations. Who's next on your board? There's a couple that I cannot believe have not gone yet. I'm going to do it. It's dangerous because it all could be corrected if a playoff run happens. But Dame is not the same guy. This is not who you mm. thought you were getting if you were a Bucs This would have been a good hottest take. Uh, whether he's not it's the, the same metrics, guy. He's not the same guy. He's just not. Um, you know what's not the same? He's good once. He's a I'm good once a week guy now or I'm good once every 10 ga- or days the quarter. Guy. He'll have that quarter. You're like, okay. It's Dame. It's just time. not consistent. It's not no. like, oh my God, Dame just ripped off this eight game stretch where he averaged 35 a game and made six threes. I just think he's at a different point of his career. But he his still sh- can dial it up in the fourth quarters. Like there's been moments where he can summon it for four or five minutes. But I think over the course of a game, not the same. No, the January shooting numbers were terrible sub 40, sub 30 from three, but whatever. Um, you know, you look at that and go, okay, not a big deal. I mean, his overall shooting numbers from the floor are, are probably lower than people realize just because he's been such a dynamic scorer, but he also got to the free throw line so many times. And now like February into March, he's not getting to the free throw line as much, which is always a bit of an alarming thing for somebody that lives off their athleticism. But I, I think I've watched them enough to be like, ah, he's still getting to the floor. Like he's still getting to the rim. He's still getting past guys. He's still one of those really good small finishers. I don't know if the rim rate numbers would tell me something different there. But, you know, that's the thing I always worry about with somebody who's a little bit older and had the injury history with all this stuff. But just who he has been this year, if you're a Bucks fan, you're probably you probably thought you were getting a little bit more. And the numbers would tell you that you would have been getting something more, even yeah. in his last year with Portland, where like that's a terrible defensive team and he was still a plus seven in the box. And now he's like a plus one point nine. And his lack of interest defensively, like there'll be moments that people put out clips be like, oh, he did this. I noticed like it happens a lot, I think, with Milwaukee. And maybe they're just like, hey, we'll worry about it when we get to the playoffs and none of this will matter. And I still think they have a chance because Giannis is that good. But he hasn't. No, they, he- they're in a way better spot than they were. But I'm with you on Dame. It, and, they, and he hasn't played in the playoffs. It'll be the first time he's played in the playoffs in three years. I forgot to do this in my hottest take about Miami. Super lucky they didn't make the Dame trade. Now they're now you're cooking. Now, now you're I'm cooking. cooking with gas. Yeah. Fucking Bears typical Miami. Three. They even when they seem like they slipped in shit, it turned out it was it was a good thing for them. Um all right. So I I'm just not gonna take them. I'm gonna make you take them. My next disappointment, All Star. We haven't had a GM yet. Masai Masai Ujiri, I just don't understand what you've done the last three years. I don't understand the team you've assembled. I don't understand if you're trying to tank or be good. Um, Sort of the Nick Nurse thing in there? The Nick Nurse thing was super weird. The not getting anything for Van Vliet thing was weird. The team they have now, it's like, I kind of like this. Like I like when they play Olenek with the guards and they've got 
there's something fun and kind of 2026 about it. But at the same time, I don't think they would have any chance to even get to the second round. Um, and I don't know. I just thought Scotty Barnes, I know, I know the stats are there and I know people are excited about him. I just don't know where you're going if he's your main guy in the last three minutes of games. I just feel like there's better offensive players that he's going to be going head to head with game after game. And if you're really giving him the car case to be your guy, I'm not sure what, where that's going ultimately in the East. Well, it's a short list of guys that are like true number ones and carry you. And despite how much I love Barnes and we both really like him. The, I just don't know if he's of, that guy. I don't think he is. Probably not. Don't love the shots. But I just in general, and they might lose their pick. The Pirtle trade is just gets weirder by the week. Um, and then not trading him at the deadline is also weird. And I just, you know, I I think sometimes like he the Kawhi thing works out, right? And they win the title. And everybody's like, this guy's amazing. Masai. Whoa. What a Jedi. I we talked about it on this pod. He's a Jedi. Amazing. Maybe that was the worst thing that could have happened to him as a GM. Because it starts making you think, ah, I can do anything. I know, I know, I know what I'm doing. Because the last few years have been pretty rough. Most of these guys default to patience, though. So yeah, like, do I mean, you like qu- at- like quickly and bear it for Ananobi and Precious? I I didn't love that trade when it happened, but now I'm looking at it. It's like I, you're going to pay quickly 140 million dollars. I think we both said we like Barrett more before the trade happened. Um, yeah, to be fair. And yeah, but I'm just saying they they got the second and third guys in the trade. They gave up somebody who is. Easily the best guy in that trade who's now, of course, hurt. I think you, yeah, and OG's hurt a lot. And he's going to well, be Well, maybe, really maybe that's why they did it. Yeah, but OG's corner three numbers. Like, I, can't, I don't even know. Like, he's been terrific on the corner three stuff, but I don't know if you looked at it with New York. It's like, is he going to keep that up? Because, like, then it's at a whole other level with it. Uh, it sounds like you would rather he just do what everybody else did and trade for picks. And instead, it was like, maybe I'm going to get these guys. But now, look, this problem is like, once you get the guys and you know who you are, like, this is not a very good team. What was the point of the Olympic trade? Canada. Just he's from Canada? Quickly had a good game today against uh, my Hornets, who I bet on every single game. Why, to cover? Yeah, the Hornets over and over again are treated like they're the worst team in the league. And every game, they're if they're playing somebody that's not like the Bucks, they'll actually hang around. Like they lost to the Raptors today by five. Yeah, but we just, we just brought them up. They're the second worst covering team in the league. So you know. No, but now, you, now are you catching them on the high end? Team. Yeah, I'm talking like this. My guy, Grant Williams, 40 Grant? minutes today, 18 and 13, five assists. He's bringing a winning championship attitude to them. Uh, imagine who do you have for next imagine an assistant coach quote tweeting that you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't talk enough about that. People listening to the pod last year, we were dropping a lot of breadcrumbs. I like him. I think he's a nice guy. I just, you know, maybe he needed a little bit of a comeuppance and now, uh, now he's had it. Who do you have for your next pick? I still have a couple good ones left. Uh, yeah, the problem is, is we said six each and then we, we had overlaps, which we knew we were going to have. All right. All can right. I, ri- can I rip off a couple more then? Yeah. I'm just going to say I'm disappointed in, in myself. Why? What happened? Um, I'm on a new routine, I'm working out, mm. putting myself through some stuff. Just started just, working out? No, I've always been, but I I, I wanted I to kidding. take it to, to another level, like another level. Oh. Like the no fucking around zone. Like Eastern European steroids from the 70s? Like <laughs> no, what, what kind no. of level are we talking? I think uh, Southeast Asia. Okay. And I, w- I was doing okay. I was doing the work. I was taking the steps. and then. I don't know if I fractured my leg or blew out my Achilles. I didn't blow out my Achilles. I think I'd know by now. But uh, oh, you're injured. Yeah, I couldn't walk for a day. And then the pain traveled from the front of the leg to the back of the leg. So it was Muay Thai. And we've been about mm. six to seven months into it. Pretty rigid, rigid training. And I was feeling good. And my buddy was visiting me. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? 
Yeah. He's like, dude, have you looked at your birth certificate? And I was like, I'm aware, I'm aware. And then the next day he was like, can you do anything? And I was like, no, uh, I can't walk today. Hmm. But I was able to walk after that day and see Jokic. Jokic doesn't walk great, so he's doing all right. So we're not, we're, neither of us are taking scoop for the disappointment draft? <laughs> no, I have it written down because I almost was going to say I was disappointed in myself until the leg injury. And I just have, I've said this too many times on my pod. I've said it four fucking times already. Talk to me next April and I'll give you, I, I'll give you everything you want. I'll give you the segment you desperately want. If I don't want this it. Bad. Not you, the royal you. But I cannot do it until he's this bad again next year. Although I did think there were some small glimpses before this last abductor injury. I've sold no stock. No stock. Oh, I love it. Is that because you're right or stubborn? I just think I that team is, is. Uh, that team is bizarre. And yeah, but the he's situations also, bizarre. <laughs> sure, but he's also had moments where it's like you don't have to be this bad. Yeah, I know. Um. Evan Mobley not being awesome yet, I have as a personal <laughs> disappointment. And by the way, he's since he came back from injury, he's been pretty good. And he had a, a couple defensive sequences. He's always going to have earlier those. this week where you're just like, oh, there it is. But I'm yeah. telling you, let's, let's watch for it. What's the closing five of close games in the fourth quarter? Like, start paying attention to that. Because in the Dallas game, he was not in there and then came in for a defensive substitution. So, it's just something I know now with Cavs games, I'll go back and I'll look at the fourth quarter to see what happened with him. This would be a tough one for me because I, I was really all in on him I being think the a Duncan special, stuff, special player. The Duncan yeah, the Duncan stuff, stuff, stuff I loud. regret. I have some regrets. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the Lakers not taking Hawkes as a disappointment. Although, maybe also a a positive thing. Um, and then I had Zion's rebounding in the disappointment All Stars. I'm not going to put Zion in there because Zion's still been really fun to watch. And there's the rebounding. This is this is new. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. oh it's new. It's getting fucking worse. He just never has rebounded as well as you would think. For he used to like get him. seven a game. He's at five and a half this year. It's five and a half rebounds a game. You've like always that, been a it's stickler. Embarrassing. Uh, by the way, Mobley came in today with 454 left down six, and then it looks like he closed out the game. But we're taping this while that happened, so I didn't know. That's a good sign. But there's no Mitchell today. One of my favorite Char Charles Barkley things is when he gets mad when big guys can't get eight rebounds a game. He's because right. That, that's two rebounds a quarter. You can't get two rebounds a quarter. He's right. It's two rebounds a quarter. Zion can't get one and a half. Re he can't get three rebounds a half. Three. Like, are your rebounding instincts just that bad? Rebounding, uh, you have to decide you want to rebound. You, you do. And he's decided right. I don't want to rebound. <laughs> and he's made a decision. He's, he's, he's made his announcement. I'm actually good. I'm not. Have you made a decision for Christ? <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna read you all the guys who have more rebounds than Zion. In the, let's see, five and a half. The oh, this would be a good game show. Does this guy have more rebounds per game than Zion? Donovan Mitchell. Active. Yes, higher or lower? Oh, higher. He's lower. He's 5.4. Oh, you set me up. I did. Vince Williams Jr., more or less than Zion? More. 5.6. Drew Active. Holiday. Really good rebounding guard. Uh, I'll say he's still under. Higher, 5.7. Wait, and Zion's what again? 5.5. Five and you're, a half rebounds a, little, a game. So we get it I get off a tenth here. I got to get it right. This is tough. All right. Listen, I'll this lock is in. the game. I'll lock in. Kevin Love. Who's playing lower. 17.5 minutes a game. Kevin Love. Lower. Higher. 
He's averaging 6.2 rebounds a game. This is like rock, paper, scissors, and you're just in my head. I don't even know what you're going to do. <laughs> I'm going to go scissors eight straight times. James Harden. Higher. No, lower, 5.1. You're just getting killed. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this is the company that he's in. If you look at the rebounding leaders. Sign, can you get to eight? You just get he's two not. rebounds he, a quarter. What's the most he's ever had in a season? Do we know? It's a little over seven. It's weird because he has the explosiveness. He's got the girth. He's just not interested in doing it. So, so seven point was... two his second year, then missed his third year, fourth year, he only played twenty nine games, so he didn't get tired that year. Uh, look, I think when I see it, he just peels off. Um, so neither of us took Jalen Green. No, he went off last night. There's been just enough flashes from him that I I'm not giving up on something maybe significant happening with him at some point. I just wish he was on a bad team making mistakes. Feels like this team is the worst team for him. It would have been fun if he was on Charlotte or something. Uh, and then I don't know. That, didn't he get to do that for two years? I mean, it's not like they're awesome this year. I know, but he's still pretty young. I think he's like 21. 